Hello, I'm Laura Cassidy from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this media briefing from ACS Spring 2022. Post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD, affects millions of people each year, mostly survivors and witnesses of terrifying or shocking events, such as warfare, assaults, or disasters. Because current treatments don't work for everyone, new therapies are urgently needed. Now, scientists are reporting data from a phase three clinical trial of a psychedelic drug, 3,4-methylene dioxymethamphetamine, or MDMA, which is known on the street as ecstasy or molly. They're combining this with psychotherapy for the treatment of PTSD. We're joined today by Dr. Jennifer Mitchell from the University of California, San Francisco. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So what gave you the idea to test a psychedelic drug, MDMA, in combination with psychotherapy for the treatment of PTSD? Well, I've personally been interested in the development of psychedelics as therapeutics since graduate school, so going back 30 years. And then the sponsor, MAPS, has been working on this program of study for more than 20 years now, and they invited me to be a part of their phase three program about five years ago. And uh, much of what they do is dependent on anecdotal data from the 70s and 80s that demonstrated that MDMA uh, was effective in a therapeutic setting. Okay, can you tell me about the phase three clinical trial you conducted on MDMA assisted therapy and what you found out? Sure, so there were 15 study sites and they were located uh, across North America. So United States and Canada, and there were two study sites in Israel as well. And all of the study sites contributed phase three data. In short, uh, subjects were randomized, double blind, uh, placebo controlled to either receive MDMA plus therapy or placebo plus therapy. And then at the end of three treatment sessions, we measured the amount of PTSD symptomology that they had, as well as the amount of disability, the amount of depression, and found that subjects that received MDMA plus therapy Uh, fared significantly better. They improved significantly more than subjects that received placebo plus therapy. And did you see any side effects or signs of addiction resulting from the MDMA treatment? Right. So signs of addiction are something that the FDA are particularly interested in tracking for uh, MDMA. And we did not see any signs or symptoms of addictive behavior uh, in, in this study. And in terms of uh, other AEs, the most common were uh, dry mouth, a little bit of jaw tightening, uh, decreased appetite. Uh, These were typically mild to moderate in severity and often resolved without consequence at the end of the treatment session or by the integration session the following morning. How did the effectiveness of MDMA compare with the standard treatment for PTSD, which I understand is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs? Right, so the two most common pharmacotherapies are sertraline and paroxetine, as you just mentioned, and it's hard to know for certain because this wasn't a head-to-head comparison. So what we can do is we can sort of look at the results from this study and compare it to previous studies that have used sertraline and paroxetine, Uh, but what we would really need to do is do a a head-to-head to determine whether this is a more efficacious treatment when compared directly to an SSRI. Why do you think MDMA in combination with therapy helps people recover from PTSD? Well, that's a really good question. I think that MDMA is um, effective in allowing people to revisit previous trauma in a way that does not uh, immediately initiate their detachment or their withdrawal. And I think that that's really hard to do otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could imagine that people are reliving an experience that was stressful. It was fear provoking. It was, um, you know, it was, in essence, it was traumatizing. And that's not simple in a therapeutic setting. And so MDMA allows them to access that original experience without guilt or shame. Hmm. Interesting. Do you think the treatment will be long lasting or will PTSD patients likely need to have additional, you know, sessions every so often? 
Right. So that's sort of the $20,000 question. We don't yet know. We're collecting long-term follow-up data on the phase three sample right now. Based on the findings from the phase two studies, it appears that MDMA is a, is a particularly long-lasting therapeutic. So in those studies, they followed uh, the subject population out for, uh, in some cases, 18 months, and they found that the effects continued to, to last and in some cases even improved over time. So that was really interesting. And hopefully in another year, we'll know for phase three. Great. What would you say to people with PTSD who read about your research and might be tempted to self-medicate with MDMA? I would personally caution against that. I think a very important component of these uh, clinical trials is the set and setting in which the psychedelic is being administered. So a psychedelic is a great door opener, and then you want to make sure that when that door is open, you have a good facilitation to help you uh, unpack whatever comes through. And in our case, we have a, a very a well laid out treatment room, two extremely seasoned psychedelic facilitators. We have a full support staff, and that's not something that people typically have available to them if they're in their living room. When do you think MDMA assisted therapy could be available to the public? Fingers crossed, end of 2023. It depends a little on uh, when the replication phase for data collection is completed and then when a new drug application packet is presented to the FDA for review. What are your next steps for this research? Well, so the pivotal trials completed and published, and now we're in the replication phase. So the FDA has asked for at least another 100 subjects. And once those data are wrapped up, then the sponsor can take a look at the data and determine whether they have enough there to actually go ahead and submit that new drug application. And finally, what take home message would you like to leave with viewers? Take home message. Um, you know, this is sort of what some people have termed a psychedelic renaissance. So I would say be open minded. Um, be thoughtful and uh, wait to see what the data look like. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell, for sharing your research with us. Thank you very much for having me. Be sure to check out our other media briefings for ACS Spring 2022, which will be posted throughout the meeting at acs.org slash ACS Spring 2022 briefings.